what's up everybody good evening welcome in uh to another youtube live show loaded agenda tonight absolutely loaded agenda uh been dropping some videos throughout the week with snippets of things that i thought could uh dominate most of a show and we've got things on top of that that are probably going to take precedent over much of that discussion that could be happening namely Kirk Schultz, our old friend, making his presentation to the leadership of the college football playoff coming up next week. And that will be all about whether or not he can ensure future. How, how should we put it? Like, basically, if he can keep the same rights that the Pac-12 has right now and had as a full conference, he wants to ensure that that will extend beyond 2026. And uh, that seems like a tough Tough road to hoe if you are Kirk Schultz, and it is something that could also put playoff access for everybody outside of the Big Ten and SEC in jeopardy. So I want to dive into that today. Is there a reason, based on the latest information that we have on Kirk Schultz's proposal and what's going down, reason to worry after we have now seen for the first time frustration expressed by leaders from the Big Ten and SEC about how long it is taking to get all of this figured out because mainly – they're waiting on this holdup for Kirk Schultz. They're giving him his chance. They're going to hear him out. They're going to let him speak his piece. Is that putting things in jeopardy for everybody else? That is the main question that we have here tonight. Hey, speaking of the Pac-12, this is one of those stories that may get glossed over a little bit. I, one of the great characters of college athletics conference realignment history, George Klievkov. And when I say great characters, I don't mean – Obviously, that he accomplished great things. It would, in fact, be the opposite of that. But he is certainly one of the central characters in this drama, right? Uh, it looks like he's going to be on his way out. The Pac-12 is now starting to push George Klievkov out the door. And I say Pac-12, I guess that's technically what it is. Really, we're talking Pac-2 there, right? The Pac-2 sending George Klievkov packing. We also have an early favorite uh, as to who the next commish of the Pac-12 slash two might actually be. Uh, there was a huge, huge Ross Dellinger article beyond just his article about Kirk Schultz that encompassed kind of everything going on right now. It included the NCAA tournament, which you saw my video about earlier this week. I'm not crazy about where that is going at all, but Brett Yormark is one of those trying to push for expansion to the NCAA tournament. Obviously, there's work going on behind the scenes for the Big Ten to try and extend the college or expand, rather, the college football playoff field eventually, even from 12, going beyond that to 14 or 16. Uh, the Big 12 and ACC both commented through their commissioners to Ross Dellinger about their league and where they stand right now uh, and the viability of those leagues. So I definitely want to chat about that as well. It was just a ton to get into from that story. It was so long and so all encompassing. We even have an update on SMU, right? I mean, poor SMU that was worried and rightfully so they should be worried about getting a full share uh, of college football playoff revenue. It's not going to happen. They won't get a full share, but we do have seemingly some resolution there. It's something else that's expected to be voted on officially soon from the college football playoff leadership. So there's all kinds of stuff going on, man. There is all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. I got the George Cleave Pac-12 about to fire George Cleave Cobb. Hey, the SEC is going to a nine-game schedule. Chris Del Conte, let that slip out. Texas Athletic Director Chris Del Conte. I mean, if you've been watching and really paying attention to Greg Flugar, who I think is as plugged in as anybody right now to what is what is happening, you could start to draw some conclusions about that. Perhaps that is a little bit more juice to suggest that the SEC may expand at some point. Um, I mean, there's there's all sorts, all sorts of conclusions that could be drawn by things that are happening right now. ESPN, it looks like is going to land the college football playoff rights. Did a video about that earlier this week. Um, so, I mean, there are any number of topics that we can dive into. I'm going to kind of go in the order that they were presented as far as it comes from me. But you guys know if you've been here before, you can dictate where this show is going. You can help control a lot of the content here. You can do so by clicking the dollar sign below the chat box, attaching a super chat donation to your chat. It will pin it in a separate column for me and ensures that it makes the show. By doing that, you are supporting the work that I'm doing here on this channel to bring you the conference realignment, college football, college basketball content that I do here on a week-in, week-out basis. 
Uh, from a Big 12 perspective, could not do it without all of your guys' support, so I immensely appreciate all of you who do support. Another very easy way to support the channel that is totally free is just one click, just one click of the mouse. If you could like the video, uh, that would be great. Also, if you leave a comment underneath the video uh, during or after, agree or disagree in that comment section underneath the video, that helps spike that YouTube algorithm as well. So, uh, hey, love me or hate me, I am all for that as well. Would love to know if you are somebody that's worried at all about Big 12 and ACC college football playoff access in light of everything that is happening. So, again, the Super Chats, leave a donation by clicking the dollar sign below the chat box that will ensure that you get on the show here tonight. As I said the other day, yes, obviously the money definitely helps. Uh, I don't run and hide from that, but also it is difficult for me. And you guys see me stumble the times that I do try and read the regular chat when it uh, really gets rolling. So it can be tough for me. So that's your way to get on the show. That's your way to support the channel. I appreciate all of you very much. And if you are watching after the fact and you want to get on, John dash Kurtz dash four on Venmo is the way to do so. You can leave a donation there and leave your question or comment there. And I am realizing I got one left for me uh, just recently. So let me get to it. I believe it was Michael. It was Michael, who is a frequent uh, contributor on Venmo, who gets his questions or comments on the show. Appreciate you, Michael. Uh, my friend, as always, Michael says, can't make it if you go live tonight. Uh, but here's more for the KTP fund. Let's hope your mark can be persuasive if uh, needs to if he needs to save college football. Uh, hashtag mafia. As always, it's a thumbs down for the Utes. Hashtag go Cougs. A little thumbs down for the Utes from uh, Michael Goldman there. Uh, Michael, I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, always appreciate your support of the channel. And yeah, look, Brett Yormark can be very persuasive, which is kind of why I'm a little bit worried about what I'm hearing about the NCAA tournament, right? I don't really want him to be persuasive about expanding the NCAA tournament. Um, I, I understand the logic there, right? It's the same. We've talked about the the Big Ten and Tony Petiti already trying to push to expand the college football playoff from 12 to 14 or 16 because – He's got the largest conference out there. More at-large bids is better for the members of his conference, not only financially, but in terms of perception. You've got a lot of fan bases that are very loud and proud, and they're not going to want to go years at a time without making the playoff. So if there are more spots available, more of them can get into the playoff every single year. I think the same kind of concept would apply here, potentially to your mark in the NCAA tournament, right? He's looking at it like, dude, I've got a conference full of teams that could be NCAA tournament quality right now and some of them probably will get left out on the bubble if we expand the field i'd be getting everybody in there giving everybody a shot to get in there and make a run and that therefore would be uh, better for the big 12 he's got the strongest basketball product right now he's going to play that hand as hard as he can i understand that but golly the tournament is just perfect the way that it is right now it is perfect we don't need to be messing with it man we really don't but hey Michael, who is here, by the way. What's up, Michael? I know you left that yesterday, and typically I would be going live on a Wednesday, but, you know, it was Valentine's Day, all right? So I had some Valentine's Day plans, but appreciate you all working with me here. Uh, and thank you for being here, Michael. Great to see you. And thank you for your support of the channel, as always. Uh, I should remind you once again, Sunday up in the air. We'll see. I'm traveling this weekend, so it's going to depend on when I get back Sunday, and I'm not entirely sure of that yet. But typically... If you are new here to the channel, we're going live on Wednesday and Sunday nights. But yeah, to finish off that thought, I get where your mark is going. He is, however, very persuasive, as you mentioned. I don't know that he has the hand as persuasive as he might be. I don't know that he has the hand to play a whole heck of a lot of change into the college football model. Um, but I am sure that whatever the hand is, he's going to get the most juice out of it that he possibly can. I do definitely believe that from him. I mean, we've seen, we've gotten a pretty pretty clear and total picture, I think, of Brett Yormark here at this point. Very good with the big picture stuff. Very good with the marketing stuff. Not as good with, like, the granular day-to-day -day managing the conference, things we've seen, like the tiebreakers that were kind of a mess. Um, you know, even things like it, there was some uh, hubbub about moving the media at uh, Big 12 basketball media days. It's not like he's been 
or not a media day, the Big 12 basketball tournament, rather. It's not like he's been batting a thousand on everything, but the big picture stuff that really matters, he's excellent with. And that's that's obviously what the conference really needs. I, I did see a joke pass by real quick when I glanced over at the chat. I did see a joke pass by about, oh, I'm sure your mark thinks everything's hockey dory and great right now. I mean, look, I'll get to his quotes to Ross Dellinger, but he did present you know, a, a fair, like, Hey, we're, we're doing all right. Not, he certainly was not worried. He wasn't coming out with quotes being like, Oh, I'm really worried about where this is going. Now, Jim Phillips didn't really with the ACC either, but I would say the your mark quotes were about in line with what you would expect from the guy, but let's get to, I think the most important topic as it relates to most of the viewership here. We've got a lot of big 12, a lot of ACC. Now, certainly we welcome SEC. We welcome big 10. We welcome anybody, anybody that's a college football fan, group of five, whatever it might be. But Kirk Schultz making this pitch and holding up college football playoff expansion for now or ironing out the details of the college football playoff for the upcoming two years is really what is being held up right now and potentially angering, poking the bear that is the SEC and the Big Ten and putting playoff jeopardy in 2026 and beyond, playoff access in jeopardy in 2026 and beyond. That is what you're worried about right now. Uh, Washington State President, this is from Ross Dellinger, Kirk Schultz will m formally present a proposal to college football playoff leaders in a meeting next week that requests the Pac-12 be treated as a power conference in both revenue and voting rights for the extended future, he told Yahoo Sports. And I hate to do it to him. I understand why Kirk Schultz is doing this, why he's in this position. Uh, we all can get that, right? He's been stripped of power five status by forces that were really beyond his control. And what reason does he have to say, well, let me just go along with everything you guys are doing here because you've treated us so well already. I understand it. I get it. But let's just, it, does this pass the say it out loud test? He's requesting the PAC 12 be treated as a power conference in both revenue and voting rights for the extended future. They've got two teams right now. They've got two teams. And what it looks like the likely scenario is, is adding teams from the mountain West or merging with the mountain West, some formation of that. Is that really a league that we think should be treated as a power conference in revenue and voting rights? I mean, nothing against and I understand the position. I am K state grad K state fan. I understand that very easily could be my squad in the same position, but that's a tough sell, man. That's a tough sell. Regardless of how you got there, You've kind of got a jalopy right now, man. This is not a Ferrari that you're uh, that you're bringing to the table. Uh, in an interview this week, Schultz confirmed Yahoo Sports uh, February 4th report of the proposal and said he's been granted a hearing to pitch the plan to the College Football Playoff Board of Managers, of which he is a member as the Pac-12's representative. The virtual meeting is set for Tuesday. Now, I, I will say <laughs> it's another thing that kind of strikes me as funny. I understand logistical issues, and these guys have already been meeting a ton, a ton, it's like we're hearing about a meeting with the college football playoff board of managers every single week. But this should probably tell you how seriously they're taking it if, if he's just getting a virtual meeting, right? They're like, all right, fine, Kirk, you can have the Zoom. You can have the Zoom. You know, sometimes you ask somebody like, hey, do you want you want to grab some coffee? You want to meet up in person? Like, yeah, how about just a Zoom? How about a text or a phone call? Kirk Schultz got kind of bumped to just a Zoom, just a virtual meeting where he will get to make this proposal. But I suppose it's better than nothing. He is getting somewhat of a shot uh, in the proposal, the Pac-12, which will be made up of Washington State and Oregon State after this season. is asking the college football playoff to guarantee the same league revenue distribution and voting privileges as other power conference programs starting in 2026, the first year of a potential new playoff contract. They're asking the college football playoff to guarantee the same league revenue distribution amounts and voting privileges as other power conference programs. Part of the problem with that will be, I guess at that point, he's he's likely asking for what the Big 12 and the ACC would get because they will not all be the same. Starting in 2026, the revenue distribution and voting power is not going to all be the same. It will be tilted toward the SEC and the Big 10. And I think Kirk Schultz, knows that he's not going to get that. So I, I assume this argument would be, hey, we should get the same thing as the Big 12 and the ACC. Because um, you can set your watch to that. With the leverage that the Big 10 and the SEC have right now, they would not go into a new agreement in 2026 saying, hey, we're just going to divvy it up all four equal ways right now. No way. 
Uh, here's a quote from Kirk Schultz. We've been an autonomy five school and have resourced ourselves at that level for 25 to 30 years. Just because we were left standing in musical chairs, we just don't feel that we should be relegated by no fault of our own. Look, I can obviously empathize with that position. I can understand that position. Um, but it's just not one that's going to work or sell. I mean, th it, this feels a lot like, all right, like, dude, let's just throw this guy a bone. I mean, he's been out here begging for a long time. Just toss the dog a treat, appease him for a little while here, and hopefully he just goes away. And a part of the reason I say that is because later on, Kirk Schultz is going to go on to, yeah, it's a little bit further down here. Kirk Schultz goes on to say he's not going to stand there and demand that they meet all of his demands before actually voting to be okay with the five plus seven model in the playoff. He's not going to tie acceptance of his proposal to his vote. Uh, if you want the details on the finances here, in its current revenue model, the college football playoff distributes about $6 million annually to those programs and power leagues. Those in the group of five can earn about $1 million in distribution. So that's the difference that he's talking about here, potentially being relegated down to getting a $1 million per year as opposed to $6 million per year. So $5 million per year, when you're fighting for your life and every scrap that you can financially with what they're going to lose in their TV deal, you know, I mean, that, that's going to matter a lot. Like an AAC team right now, they're getting like its upper single digits uh, for their TV contract, seven, eight million dollars a year. If you're talking about five million, the difference of five million extra dollars to come into that, that's very significant. So it matters a lot. Matters a lot to Washington State. They're, again, they're not going to get it, but maybe, maybe this would lead to some sort of compromise. They have to also be watching what's going on with SMU, which it looks like that's going to be a compromise too, and I've got an update on that uh, for either a standalone video or something later on here today. Maybe this will be leading down to some level of compromise for Schultz and company. Uh, the Pac-12 and its two members have been guaranteed the $6 million payment for 2024 and 25, uh, Schultz said. Okay, so they are getting that, which, I mean, I figured they would. That's already been set in stone. They've had that contract going. Uh, well, the organization is finalizing an agreement for a six-year extension with ESPN. There remains no adopted revenue distribution model or other framework starting in 2026 and beyond. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. And that, again, is why the fear here is that you – you make Sankey mad, you make Petiti mad, and they will say, well, we'll just take our ball and go home. You guys are complaining too much about all the different elements of this. We're just going to do our own playoff. Screw you guys. Uh, Schultz's proposal is at the center of a delay in an important vote from the College Football Playoff Board of Managers made up of presidents from the 10 FBS leagues. Five weeks ago at an in-person meeting at the National Championship site in Houston, the Board of Managers was poised to adopt a recommendation from FBS commissioners to move from a 6 plus 6 12 team format to a 5 plus 7 model. Of course, the 5 plus 7 model would be representative of the fact that the Pac 12 is not a real power conference anymore. So you'd have five automatic bursts, four for the power four leagues, one outside of that, a group of five champion, and, uh, and everybody else would be at large. Of course, this vote must be unanimous, which is why Schultz has some leverage here. Uh, in the interview on Tuesday, Schultz, this is an important part, Schultz shot down the idea that his vote is tied to the granting of the proposal, but declined to reveal how he plans to vote. So he didn't say, hey, I'm going to just give in and vote for this thing. Five plus seven is fine, but I want a chance to make my proposal. But he also didn't say, hey, I'm going to hold their feet to the fire. And if they don't accept my accept my proposal, I will just hold this thing up. Uh, quote this is from Schultz, quote, we're not going to tie those two things together. That's not appropriate. There's been some speculation that the two are tied together. That would be the place where the Pac-12 conference would not be a good colleague for college football by going. We've given you a proposal. You better do exactly as we ask or there's going to be some penalty. That's not the right stance to take. Well, cheers to that. We should all raise our glasses to that. That actually makes you feel a little bit better. If you are a Big 12 or an ACC fan here, that he's not going to at least according to this, according to his word that he has said to Ross Dellinger, he's not going to be such a hindrance that he would completely hold this thing up and potentially drive the powers that be in the Big Ten and the SEC to be like, no, forget this. We're just going to go do our own thing. They may still do it eventually, but at least this sounds like Kirk Schultz is not going to, you know, when I first heard the story, I could just picture Kirk Schultz based on everything we know about him and 
rightfully how he's been treated along with Oregon State in this whole deal. You could see him totally standing up and, you know, being the guy standing in the middle of the road with the cars trying to run him over and be like, I'm not moving. I'm not moving and really messing it up for everybody else. But it looks like it looks like that's not going to be the case. Um, but still is going to take his his shot. He's going to take his chance. Um, Schultz acknowledged that it behooves the Pac-12 to operate under a playoff format that has more at large spots. <laughs> this is interesting. I had not actually thought about this. Schultz acknowledged it actually is better for the Pac-12 to operate under a playoff format that has more at-large spots because of a policy change that commissioners adopted at a meeting in November. And that change would be that a conference has to have at least eight members to qualify for an automatic spot. So, yeah, look, they're saying, buddy, Kirk, you can't get an automatic spot anyway. Why would you be holding up this five plus seven thing? You are not going to be in a league the next two years that would actually qualify because you won't have eight members. So you can't get one of these six automatic bids like what are we really doing here you're going to need to get an at-large bid uh the policy was deemed as a commissioner's issue and did not need unanimous approval from the board of managers quote if you look ahead clearly more at-large bids are going to be advantageous to the pac-12 given that we no longer have status as an automatic qualifier in the long run that's where we need to be no doubt in our minds that if you look at what's best for our schools the five plus seven and more at-large spots is clearly going to be better for the pac-12 I get why they're doing it, but also a little bit funny that it continues to be referred to as the Pac-12. It's really not the the Pac-12 at this point. Uh, after presenting his proposal, Schultz is expecting a vote to transpire Tuesday in a video call with the Board of Managers. If the proposal is granted, it has received pushback. Uh, the college football playoff can nullify the carve-out if the Pac-12 dissolves or if Washington State or Oregon State join another league. All right, so Schultz is saying, look, if you guys accept it, if this thing blows up, if we go to the Mountain West, you can just drop it. Forget about the whole thing. Don't worry about it. Now, I would wonder about the semantics there if it's like the reverse merger kind of thing that's been talked about with the Mountain West. Like, how you know, th there probably would be some semantics that could come into play there. Uh, Schultz and those at Oregon State are in the process of formulating a future plan to both protect the brand of the Pac-12 and potentially rebuild the league. Uh, the league made news on Tuesday, breaking news. I told you guys this earlier on, but the league made news on Tuesday when it began to formally separate from commissioner George Klievkov by notifying the 10 outgoing PAC 12 schools of a transition in leadership. The transition is expected to be executed at a PAC 12 board meeting Friday. The PAC 12 board now only consists of Washington state and Oregon state Friday boy. This could be we could be sitting here talking about the last day. This could be the last full day for George Klievkov and his reign as commissioner of the Pac-12. Uh, the two schools and Klievkov have agreed to a negotiated settlement to part ways. And Deputy Commissioner Teresa Gould is being targeted as his replacement, sources told Yahoo Sports. The Pac-12 retains a spot on both the College Football Playoff Management Committee and College Football Playoff Board of Managers until the end of the College Football Playoff's current contract through 2025. So I'm going to look up Teresa Gould here real quick. Let's see what Teresa Gould's background is. Joined the Pac-12 in August of 2018. More than three decades of experience across a variety of successful roles in D1 college athletics. She's also been a television and media executive. That seems good. Overseas management of the Pac-12's women's basketball and Olympic sports, oversight of championship events, compliance, governance, student athlete engagement. She came from UC Davis, was the interim athletics director there at one point in time. Also worked in the athletic department at Cal. So, all right, from Berkeley. Seems like a decent, decent enough background. Seems like a decent enough background there. Uh, but there's your update. I, I would say generally I took from that. If you are a big 12 fan, if you are an ACC fan, I, I found that to be fairly positive because it seems like Kirk Schultz is in reasonable mode, like reasonable enough. And he's saying, look, I'm not going to, they're not going to have to approve this or else for me to vote for this thing. I'm not doing that, but I am going to stand up for ourselves and take our shot and make our case here. Um, I am pleasantly surprised that it appears Schultz is going to be reasonable. I, I pictured him as a guy that certainly has nothing to lose that, you know, he could just be, you know, that like the Ben Affleck meme that was going around of like him with the cigarette where he just looks incredibly disheveled. Like, you know, based on everything that's happened, you could understandably see that being Kirk Schultz and just being like to hell with 
conforming to anything. I don't have to. And that's where you just start to get nervous. Like I mentioned a couple shows ago that Sankey and Petiti will just thumb their nose at everybody. But it seems like Kirk is going to be a good enough soldier here if he sticks to his word. So I would say that is a positive development. That is a positive development, what we're seeing from this Ross Dellinger story. Uh, let's see. Michael, hopping back into some Super Chats here real quick uh, as we transition. If you want to hop in on the action tonight, click the dollar sign below the chat box to leave a donation with your chat. Makes it a Super Chat, puts it in a separate column for me. Uh, that is the way you can guarantee that you get on the show tonight and support the work that I'm doing to bring you this college football, college basketball, conference realignment content, uh, all with a big 12 spin on things here on this channel. Uh, also, if you could like the video, I'd appreciate that. Totally free, easy way to support. And leave a comment in the comment section of the video right underneath. All of that stuff really does help as well. Love me, hate me, agree, disagree. Any of that is awesome. Uh, let me know what you think about everything we're chatting about on the show tonight. And john kurtz 4 on Venmo, if you'd like to leave a question or comment there with your donation, it will make it on the next show. So even if you're not watching this live, you can still be a part of things. Uh, Michael, doesn't he have relatives that can be persuasive? I believe that was talking to Brett Yormark. What is is this a reference to Brett Yormark's brother? Let me know if I'm missing anything. Uh, Michael Yormark, business and sports entertainment executive. He is the president and chief of branding and strategy at Rock Nation Sports, former president and CEO of Sunrise Sports and Entertainment of the Florida Panthers organization. Man, I didn't realize they were like both at, at Rock Nation then, I guess, before uh, – before Brett Yormark came over to the Big 12. Michael, I may be missing something there. Let me know if something's going over my head on that one. But I uh, immediately think of Yormark's brother and the picture of them at, uh, I think it was a Kansas basketball game earlier this year, right? Were they standing with Fran for Schilla? Just looked like the same dude. Looked like the exact same dude. Uh, Alan, what's up, Alan? Great to hear from you, my friend. Appreciate you as always. Alan, I know it's a, it's been a rough go for the Jayhawks here as of late, uh, on the road at least. And just with some injuries, kind of beat up right now. Alan says, John, KU disappoints on the road. Uh, still with Bill Self, nobody will want to draw a number six seed KU. In an odd twist of fortune, Jayhawks can now say at least football season is coming. Rock Chalk Jayhawk, Alan. Hey, that is true, man. It's going to be an exciting football season in Lawrence. I, I don't doubt any of that. Um you know, the road thing, the, the, losing by 29 was the jarring part of that. Losing at Texas Tech, there's no shame in that at all. Losing at Manhattan, there's no shame in that at all. Um, there's only been one Big 12 team to beat K-State at home this year, that being Oklahoma, when when K-State did admittedly really lay an egg there. Like, these are not, you know, Iowa State losing in Ames, of course, is not embarrassing at all this year. But Kansas, you know, for a while – had somewhat of an invincibility even when playing on the road that's kind of changed the last few years they continue to protect home court but you know with a roster like this and they've had some you know i'll say bad luck combined with perhaps bad judgment like you know arterio morris that whole thing bringing him in with a roster spot it's probably a mix of some bad luck and bad judgment there that didn't work out for them now you're having injuries with kevin mcculler uh el marco jackson just has not been ready to go so, you know, a roster that limited and that lacking in depth is going to run you into some problems when you start to get a little bit beat up. And, and clearly you did see that. But uh, so I think you have you have a Kansas squad that's not quite where they're at. A Kansas squad that have been losing some of the invincibility on the road over the last couple of years. Anyway, I saw someone did a good breakdown of how that record has changed. It was late 20 teens that it started to go down. Kansas became more human on the road, and that's kind of continued outside of the 2020 season when they won all nine games, and that team was really damn good that didn't get a tournament because of COVID. Um, so I think that's just kind of the reality, but it's the reality that basically everybody in the Big 12 faces right now. And I, I certainly still would not count Kansas out. I just – it's it's like betting against – Patrick Mahomes, it's like betting against Tom Brady, either of those guys in the playoffs. You just have to kind of stop and say, like, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Do not bet against those guys. I have a hard time still saying, hey, Big 12 title race is going to be Houston, Iowa State, and Baylor, and just leaving Kansas out of that conversation. I, You know, I suppose Texas Tech could come in and say, hey, we should be in there too. I think they've got a really tough schedule coming up. But, you know, we'll see. But I, I certainly hesitate to count Kansas out. Um, 
And Alan, I, I completely agree with you too. Yeah, nobody would want to see them in the tournament. Like who's who's the three seed that wants to see six seed Kansas in, in your scenario there? The, no, no three seed is going to want to see six seed Kansas in the, the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. Not at all. Uh, but Alan, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate your support of the channel. As always, uh, love having you around here, my friend. Our web, what's up, our web? Uh, our web says George is getting his calimony and can now shop. Yeah, there was no dollar amount that was specifically dropped in there for what the settlement is going to be. But I, I believe, where was it that we at one point read that it was going to be Guy saw like in the $8 million range or something like that. I thought was maybe what the settlement was expected to be with Cleve Cobb. Like I know last we heard of him, he was chilling at his ranch in Montana. Like clearly the guy's got some dough. Cleve Cobb's got some money and he's about to get a whole hell of a lot more. And the irony is he's going to get all that money for greatly reducing the amount of money coming into uh, the pockets of Oregon state and Washington state. But you know, I digress. I guess he did help uh, USC and UCLA earn a little bit more money. He did do that. He's not going to help Oregon and Washington earn more money necessarily right away. But eventually, eventually, once they start getting full shares in the Big Ten, that will be the case. Um, so, yeah, anyway, you you are you are correct there, <laughs> George. George is going to get a lot of money to just go away and forever be remembered as a pretty entertaining character in this entire conference realignment and college athletics saga uh david what's up david appreciate you david thank you for being here thank you for your support david says i think stanford and cal end up back in the new pack 12 after the acc loses fsu and others i think the new pack whatever whatever so yeah whatever number would be hoping to keep power five status with this move i you know i the the talk of that i've seen came from that john wilner story a couple of weeks ago and we did discuss it here on the channel where he kind of did his writing from the future this is how things worked out this is how it happened and eventually things wound around toward the, but that the problem with that is it includes his scenario anyway a super league being created and the super league was created with the big 10 and and the sec and then everybody else reformed in like geographic conferences that made sense and obviously the only problem with that is like well you're getting left out of the big time like yes there would be a new pac 12 but you are getting left out of the big leagues and we would have a complete split, you know, instead of just kind of a half split, we'd have a complete split of like big leagues, minor leagues and everything else uh, going in college athletics. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, so I guess, I guess, and maybe I'm missing a theory here. I know there have been references to like a Frankenstein conference being created, but that's more in the vein of the ACC that, that I know that could still be on the table as opposed to just all those schools getting away and joining the big 10 or the sec. It could be getting away and forming, I guess, a trim the fat version of the, the ACC that maybe gets a better TV deal. You know, I don't know. I've seen some of that discussed too. Uh, look, I would love it. I would love it. If the ultimate, reality of all of this is the the betterment of the sport wins out and we do do more of like a regionalized thing the pac-12 can get back together that'd be great that'd be great but i i don't i don't see it happening and maybe it's just acc implodes i guess what you're saying here is i'm talking this all through in my head acc implodes oregon state and washington state maybe take some schools from the mountain west cream of the crop there and then cal and stanford come back because the acc is imploded like okay I was making that a little bit too complicated. I, I can see, I suppose, where you're going with that. Um, I don't I don't know that it's necessarily for a, a plan of that. I think it's just like a fight for survival here in the moment, like a plan to just try and keep whatever it is that you can for whatever that's going to look like in the future. But you're right. Uh, I suppose under the right circumstances, the ACC blowing up, that, that could turn Cal and uh, Stanford back around there. So, yeah, fair thought, David. Fair thought, even if it took um, – even if it took me – staggering around to uh to get to that a little while appreciate you david thank you uh alpha cat what's up alpha cat uh looking at standings and schedule iowa state is my pick to win the title i mean it's as good a pick as any right now there's no doubt about that um you know I, the clones is it houston this weekend no next weekend so texas tech at home tricky game but they should definitely be the favorite at home hard to beat them there uh going to houston that's tough 
West Virginia and Oklahoma at home. I mean, back-to-back home games at UCF, at K-State, BYU at home. Yeah, that's manageable. That's very manageable. They've got four of the last seven at home. So they it's a 4-3 split favoring them at home. Toughest home games, BYU and Oklahoma. I mean, those are definitely manageable. The road trip to Houston will be really difficult. The rest of the Big 12 better root, be rooting like hell for Houston in that game if uh, if they want Iowa State to not win this thing. But, yeah, Iowa State's a pretty complete team, and uh, they look really good right now. Um, you know, by complete, they play good offense and defense. Um, I, I think there's every reason to believe that Iowa State can be in it. Let me see what Houston has left. So I can do that rather quickly here. Boy, that. FPI on ESPN that had like an 86% chance for a Houston win in that game. Houston still has. They got Texas at home. Yeah. Iowa State at home. They got to go to Baylor and they have Kansas at home. Yeah. I mean, that's tough. Cincinnati, Oklahoma, and UCF in there as well. They've got four home games, three road games. So still have kind of that home advantageous split. Oklahoma and UCF on the road. Certainly not easy, but that's doable. Um, yeah, maybe a slight edge to the Cyclones with that schedule. Let me see what Baylor's got. Baylor's got... They have to go to BYU. They've got to go to Texas Tech. They've got to go to TCU and to West Virginia. So they've got more road than home. Um, and then their home games are Houston, Kansas, and Texas. Yeah, they've still got Houston and Kansas coming in. Yeah, I would say Iowa State probably... I'd give slight edge. Slight edge to Iowa State there terms of the uh the schedules that they have left so yeah i wouldn't argue, i wouldn't fight you too much on that alpha cat i really wouldn't right now um appreciate you alpha cat and i appreciate you nate thank you for being here uh nate says are k-state fans mad that the texas game uh that the monday game versus texas has been moved to espn2 to make way for houston versus iowa state on big monday i gotta be honest man i have not heard a single word about it <laughs> i really have not i have not heard anybody complaining about it but also the the k-state season's in kind of a weird spot where like they're they're off midweek this week so and then the last game they played was saturday at nine o'clock at night like weird start time late game so it was just i didn't feel as much excitement and buzz because of the start time at byu then they got way down in that game and it was late at night so i think a lot of people kind of tuned it out they have a furious comeback going straight into the Chiefs Super Bowl and then, you know, subsequent stuff that's happened in Kansas City and then not playing a game this week. They're just, it, it's kind of a lull. There's been kind of a lull, I would say, with the the fan base and everybody around it, you know, media, et cetera, with, with the team right now, which is not really totally their fault. It's just kind of the way that the schedule worked out and so much overlap between Chiefs and K-State fans. So, no. I haven't. And like, if you ask me, like, am I mad about it? I mean, look, it makes sense, dude. Like Houston and Iowa state, everyone's going to want to watch that game. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really, uh, begrudge that very much. Um, so yeah, anyway, appreciate you, Nate. Uh, thank you for being here. If you guys want to join the chat tonight, click the dollar sign uh below the chat box in order to do so and create a super chat you can be a part of things here somebody asked earlier is brett yormark uh well speculated earlier that brett yormark would be saying hey everything's great totally rosy outlook for the future of the big 12 we do have some quotes from uh, both he and jim phillips of course the commissioner of the acc on sort of the state of the union address kind of thing for the big 12 and acc right now in light of the big 10 and the sec starting to work together um, and work together toward what we don't totally know what the end goal will be. Clearly it's reform in college athletics in some way, but a lot of people, myself included uh, are a little leery of that, have some worry about where that might be going, where that might be headed. So this is a section from Ross Dellinger's one of his latest pieces this week, where he kind of tackled all the big picture stuff going on in college athletics and I frame this as the Big 12 and ACC still still really thinking that they belong. So Dellinger says the Big 12 doesn't look or feel like a conference that's being left behind. And that's because Brett Yormark says it isn't. Quote, we are the number one basketball conference in America. He told Yahoo Sports in an interview last week. We're showing up as a conference in places that we haven't been before. 
and we're partnering with third parties that no one has ever considered. We're facing challenges, but that's not new to me. There's a lot of possibility and opportunity. It's a very Brett Yormark quote, right? I mean, that sounds like the guy. Pretty positive, pretty upbeat. One quick acknowledgement of challenges being there, but saying like, hey, that's what I do. That's what I do, man. I take down challenges. Very, very confident. And uh, your mark certainly was with that quote. Dellinger also said the Big 12 and ACC believe they will be a part of the creation of a new athlete compensation model and further deregulation from NCAA governance, which is important because that's kind of the idea behind the joining of forces between the Big Ten and the SEC that has now formally and officially happened, that they're going to be fighting some of that stuff. Well, the Big 12 and the ACC believe they will still be a part of that. They also believe that they'll be a part of the expected overhaul of the college football playoff revenue distribution model, governance structure, and perhaps even format. They'll be a part of it. I mean, that I would agree with them on. They are going to be a part of it, but how big of a part of it is certainly up for debate at this point. And then this, you know, this is one of the lines I talked about in the video earlier this week. They also believe they will be a part of the inevitable expansion of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. So again, that one word in there, inevitable, uh, inevitable. Of course, we're going to expand the thing. I mean, you know, I guess I won't complain too much. If I got more basketball games with stakes attached to them to watch, but the tournament is perfect as it is. Um, uh, whatever. Here's a Jim Phillips quote. We discuss these things individually, but they are all interconnected and one influences the other in many respects. We are in the middle of massive change in our industry. We are working together to eventually come up with a sustainable model for college athletics. And we believe that both the college football playoff and NCAA men's basketball tournament need a holistic look. Okay. Fair enough. I guess give everything a look, Jim Phillips. Uh, Phillips says the four leagues have been working as closely as he's seen in his time as commissioner. That's why the SEC and Big Ten's announcement to create a joint advisory board led to a question from many within the industry. Oh, we even get a Mike Oresco quote in here. I forgot about this. Quote, I was a little surprised that the ACC and Big 12 weren't included. That's typically been the MO, said American Athletic uh, Conference Commissioner Mike Oresco. Yeah, it's typically been the MO, but that was also under the old the old world, you know, where things were a little bit more even. Now we've got the new TV deals for the SEC and the Big Ten. We know how far they're pulling out in front of everybody. And uh, the power structure is a little bit different right now. So this this surprises me 0% that this is where we're at right now. In an interview with Yahoo Sports, Commissioners Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti underscored the need for the advisory board to be as small as possible to quickly reach solutions uh, for urgent matters such as the multi-billion dollar house antitrust lawsuit. NCAA governance proposal, Project D1, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I do have to agree with them on that front. When when too many cooks are in the kitchen, you get things like the college football playoff board of governors meeting every single week without anything ever getting solved and having to throw Kirk Schultz a Zoom presentation to try and tell you why the Pac-12 should still be a Power 5 conference. You get more things like that, the more people that you have involved – and especially the more people that you have involved, they're going to have different agendas. And I'm not saying the Big Ten and the SEC's agenda is completely the same, but they're basically on the same playing field here. So they're going to have much more of the same agenda than the ACC and the Big 12 are. So, like, I get it. I get it. It sucks and it worries me, but I get it. I get why it is that they did that. Uh, Sankey insists that whatever solutions the joint board reaches are one, an effort to benefit everybody in the ecosystem and two, not an attempt to secede from the NCAA or college football playoff. Although such decisions seem to remain viable. Some believe. Yeah, exactly. Here's a quote though from Jim Phillips. He's not worried. Jim Phillips says, I trust Greg and Tony and what they've said. I'm not paranoid about this, that it's a sinister movement. Look, it's fine to not be paranoid about it. I wouldn't say that I'm paranoid about it. I would just say that I'm on high alert, man. And you have to be. You'd be dumb not to be. And I'm, I'm sure Phillips probably is behind the scenes. But you want to also project some confidence here. Uh, here's Brett Yormark. If Tony and Greg want to go into a deeper think tank with their key stakeholders about the future of college athletics, there's no pride of authorship here as long as that communication continues at the rate it's been. I really don't think about this as an opportunity for them to move in a different direction. That's Brett Yormark. 
Brent Yormark really doesn't think about this as an opportunity for them to move in a different direction and say, hey, look, as long as the communication keeps up with us, I'm cool with it. So there's your Brett Yormark uh, State of the Union on where things are at right now. Brett Yormark not terribly worried, at least in terms of what he is saying. Same with Jim Phillips. But to be honest, you can just look at these quotes, I think, and what else are they going to say? What else are they going to say? Hey, we're at a definite, definite strategic disadvantage. We've got to kind of be worried about this because of the position that we're in. Uh, we're never going to feel totally safe. You can't really do that. Uh, last line that Dellinger had here in this section, uh, leaders from the ACC and Big 12 believe they pack enough of a resume punch off and perhaps even on the football field to represent a voice on impending change. You know, they, they probably do to, to represent a voice, but it's not going to be as powerful of a voice. And uh, I think clearly we all understand where, where that's going. They will have a voice. It will not be as powerful as it used to be, relatively speaking. Uh, it's going to be tilted in advantage of the other two conferences. Okay, let's hop back into a couple of Super Chats here. If you want to join the show tonight, click the dollar sign below the chat box. In order to do so, it will pin your question or comment in a separate column for me. And you'll be supporting the work that I'm doing here on this channel to bring you conference realignment, college football, college basketball content from a Big 12 angle here on this channel regularly. Appreciate all of you. If you could like the video, I would really appreciate that as well. Leave a comment in the comment section of the video underneath. Uh, all that stuff really helps. Here is Jamie. What's up, Jamie? Great to see you. Appreciate you as always. Uh, Jamie says it's going to be awful for all the college football for all of college football if a 12 team or 16 team playoff is made up of 90 percent Big Ten or SEC schools. Hopefully Brett Yormark stands up for the Big 12 and makes this as fair as he can for everyone. I guess I should have put that comment up on the screen because it came after uh, the donation there in the super chat. But yeah, look, I mean, I'm all for Brett Yormark standing up for the Big 12 as much as he can. I guess it's just like how much can you stand up? You know, what What cards do you really have to play? I know he's, he's riding the basketball thing hard right now, which makes total sense, even if I'm not crazy about the idea of expanding the NCAA tournament. So maybe that's really what it is. Brett Yormark flexing that muscle as much as he possibly can here at the moment and riding that for all it's worth. He's definitely not a guy that's going to just bow down, right? I mean, we know that. Like, I, that was always the perception of the big 12 whether it was bob bowlsby whether it was dan Beebe, that it was kind of a league that would just you know just take it and not not stand up for itself enough brett yormark is not that guy at all we've seen that time and again and even those quotes you know there's enough bravado in those kind of coach speak sort of quotes that brett yormark kind of has to put out there at this point that you know that's not what he's going to do i'm confident in that but you you also do have to you are towing somewhat of a line in this day and age back to the original main topic of the video where we're talking about like, Hey, you got to be a little bit careful with not poking the bear too much with Sankey and Petiti because they can ultimately determine your fate when it comes down to what happens with the, the playoff and therefore like your real viability within the sport. So it's, it's probably a little bit different than where the calculus would have been before when you know, Hey, the rest of this contract with the playoff, everybody's got the same voting rights or whatever. You can take more stands like what Kirk Schultz is trying to do right now. You've got to really understand what you're doing politically with the politics and the inner workings of everything happening with the playoff and the, the power five leagues or power four leagues, whatever you want to call it at this point, you gotta, you gotta have a good understanding of what you're doing. Your mark seems really savvy. So I'm not terribly worried about that, but I do think it's, it's more complicated than it used to be, which is an un unfortunate reality of the situation staring everybody in the face. Uh, but thank you, Jamie. Appreciate you, as do I appreciate Browns and Beers. What's up, Browns and Beers? Great to see you. Browns and Beers says a full ACC Big 12 uh, merger makes little sense, but working together on a basketball challenge and something like the Backyard Brawl, maybe UCF and Miami playing Thanksgiving weekends works for both. I mean, who wouldn't want to see the Backyard Brawl every single year? I loved it. Was that wasn't this past year? Was it two years ago where that was like the opening night college football game on a Thursday? Give me that, dude. Give me that. Give me backyard brawl right out of the shoot every single year. Um, I would sign up for that in a heartbeat. Yeah, if you could create some scheduling allegiances, I definitely think it would make sense for both conferences, even if it's not going to be a ton of extra juice. Uh, the challenge could help. That could help if Brett Yormark is really wanting to leverage basketball. I think I talked about this the other day. Like, who wouldn't want to see? 
Kansas, North Carolina, Kansas, Duke, Baylor, North Carolina, Baylor, Duke, like matching up those programs uh, every single year would, would be great if we can get more of that. And there, there might be some money in it. I'm trying to remember which article it was that suggested, hey, there might actually be a little bit of money. Oh, it was Wilner said there, there might actually be a little bit of money in the basketball element of it. Whereas, you know, most of the time we think about football, which is where I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I don't know that there would be a lot of money in that. But uh, anyway, yeah, Browns and Beers, I'm with you. Um, full ACC Big 12 merger basically just can't happen. You know, I mean, I know the question was asked in Wilner's mailbag the other day, but anything that gives Florida State and those other schools just an immediate opening to be able to tear up the contracts and say, well, hey, I mean, here we go. We're not under the same jurisdiction that we were before. Uh, that's a total no-go. Like you just can't do it, obviously, because the ACC can't can't survive that. So, yeah, you won't see that, but maybe maybe Phillips and Yormark decide to work together a little bit more. Uh, we shall see. Thank you, Browns and Beers. Appreciate you being here. Uh, probably going to wrap up here pretty soon. So this is buzzer beater time. If you've got something, click that dollar sign below the chat box in order to submit your question or comment. Um. Got the SEC nine game schedule. You know, maybe I'll show you this tweet. I got a tweet today. This is kind of a nice, I would say like lighthearted. It's not really lighthearted, but just like a, seems like a fairly appropriate way to end the show today. Um, It's ESPN. It's our good friends at ESPN. Um. I've got to set this up to share my screen here. Let's present, share screen, Twitter, great work, ESPN. All right. So, Anthony, Anthony has this tweet here that says, What in the world is this framing by ESPN? So, he gets a push alert from ESPN on his phone that says, only three Big 12 teams are in the top 20 of Bill Connolly's list of 134 college football teams. It's not accurate. Uh, Anthony points out there are four Big 12 teams in the top 20. Uh, I guess maybe is it that Arizona is in is in there and we're forgetting about Arizona coming to the league. So not accurate. And then the Big 12 has the same number of top 20 teams as the Big 10. The Big 10, one of the Power 2 conferences, and the ACC only had two. All about the framing, man. All about the presentation. Like, when I do a video earlier this week saying, like, hey, I'm really frustrated about the fact that ESPN is getting all the rights to the playoff. Like, we're giving them total control over all this stuff. I mean, they set the narrative on everything. They decided to set this narrative back in the late 2000s, early 2010s that the SEC was king. And the SEC, you know, they send so many guys to the NFL. This is far and away the best conference. Nobody else can compete. And there there certainly was some merit to that and the talent that was there and the championships that were being won. I'm not saying it was completely off base, but they definitely pushed it and helped accelerate it. Like, they can set the narratives. And that is a pretty ridiculous, ridiculous way to frame all of that. Um, so I figured everybody would appreciate that. Um and by appreciate, I mean, of course, uh, probably become fairly infuriated by all of that. But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You still got to fight those battles out there. That's why it, it is important to have a guy like Brett Yormark at the helm of the Big 12 who knows how to market and how to try to combat some of those narratives and at least be somewhat proactive, which is that's been one of the biggest things that has changed under his leadership is that the Big 12 actually tries to be proactive in some of those circumstances as opposed to all the time being reactive. All right, David, back in here. Appreciate you, David. Uh, David says, I think basketball is moving up. Uh, Nebraska against Iowa, ladies had 1.5 million viewers. It's a pretty good number. That is definitely a pretty good number for Caitlin Clark against Nebraska. Uh, that is larger than a lot of bad Power 5 football matchups. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's – a, I mean, you put a game like on – you put like a big 12 game, lower level, big 10 game on Fox sports one, like FS one, it's doing like half that. Maybe um, just saying more sports on more carriers will help viewership numbers. Uh, well, if we're talking about women's basketball, ESPN did just also ink that deal where they're going to get the entire women's NCAA tournament. So a lot of that is going to still continue, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Big 12 basketball is, 
it is still a valuable entity. And I mean, the, I think the whole point this this entire time with Yormark has been he sees it as a valuable. He definitely is the guy that sees it as what it can be, the value of it, and thinks that there is more money there. Firmly believe that and think that he is going to try and split that off at some point. But you're right. There's an increasing interest in women's basketball as well. Uh, the Big 12 is... You know, this is where I'll be honest, I'm a little out of my depth, and it's mainly because I just don't have the bandwidth to take everything in on the women's basketball side of things when I'm already, you know, always keeping track with realignment and football and then men's basketball and then just trying to live a life. Uh, so it is it is difficult for me to have the bandwidth to totally understand where the Big 12 is in the pecking order in women's basketball. I, I definitely know K-State's having a good year. Um, but, yeah, I think the point that you're making is – that basketball in general could all be more valuable than what uh, than what we are perhaps giving it credit for right now. So, uh, David, appreciate you weighing in. Always appreciate your support of the channel. Dan, I was going to see if I guess there isn't anything else there. Well, Dan, thank you for your support of the channel, my friend. Uh, Dan chipping in. No question or comment attached. It doesn't look like I missed anything, Dan, but hey, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate all of you for being here. And um I think I'm going to wrap it up. I will once again remind you, I am traveling this weekend, and I'm not 100% sure what time I will be getting back on Sunday. So to be determined as to whether or not there will be a live show on Sunday, I will certainly try. Uh, if I can, if I get home in time, I definitely will. Um, but we'll see. I'll try to keep you updated. Um, try to use that uh the function where you can leave a message on uh, actual YouTube. Part of the problem though is I don't think I can do that on my phone. I always feel like I have to do it anyway. Figure something out. If I'm not live on Sunday, I will definitely uh, try to give you a live show on Monday. Although, you know, okay, stays playing on Monday. Well, we'll see. We'll see. It's all a little up in the air right now. My schedule is is going to be a little different the next couple of days. So stay with me. You guys know, like I, I stay. I feel like about as consistent as anybody out there. So. Um, I'll do what I can to keep getting you guys content and uh, should should see some more content between now and the weekend as well. Anyway, I've got some stuff uh, loaded up and ready to go already for you anyway. So uh, with that, please, if you could like the video on your way out, I would really appreciate that. That always helps. If you leave a question or comment in the comment section of the video underneath, that is also great. Uh, how you feeling about this Kirk Schultz thing? You feel OK if you're a Big 12 or an ACC fan? Let me know. In the comment section, that's another easy way to support the channel. If you do that, uh, spread the word, man. Word of mouth. Tell people about the channel. Um, let your friends and family know. Social media, X, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever it is that you're on social media, let your friends and family know. Let's continue to push this thing close to 20K, man. We are almost there. Appreciate all of you guys immensely. Enjoy the rest of your week. Oh, Nate. Nate popping in here. Nate, thank you, sir, for the safe travels. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your week, Nate, and everybody else. Take care, and I will talk to you soon.